it's good to be here this morning. It's uh, been a little while, but glad to be back here. Um, for quite a while now, me and my boss that I work with, we've uh, we ride in a truck, deliver buildings, and uh, we've uh, we've been talking a lot about faith lately. It's really been working me over. So I got a little something here this morning on faith that I was going to share with us. Um, Hebrews chapter ten and uh, verse thirty-five. <clears throat> Hebrews 10 and 35 says, Cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. And I've thought lately that there's a there's a process for faith. You know, we're we're seeking for something. We're trying to find a reward, Brother Tommy. We're we're try, we're expecting something. We're we're seeing if we can get ourselves there. But we're not going to receive a reward if we don't put any effort into it. If we don't have any skin in the game, we're just over here just just kind of hanging out. I don't feel like we're going to get much out of it. The Bible does say, though, that I just read that you have need of patience, that you might receive the promise. But you need to put a little bit into it for a little while. In chapter 11, it goes on, and it talks about now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. And all throughout this chapter, it goes on talking about different ones. By faith Abel, by faith Enoch, by faith Noah, by faith Abraham. Uh, just It goes on and on, all the ones that di different ones that had faith in it. And I was listening to a message by A.W. Tozer. And he said that faith here is demonstrated. It's not defined. He said that people tried defining it. But he said there's a demonstration all throughout this chapter of people that actually did something about it. They showed you this is what you need to do it. I, I preached this message one other time and I, I used this illustration that if, if I told Whitley, my, my baby girl, that I was going to give her a piece of candy, that she knows Daddy's got some candy, bro, Junior. He's going to give it to me. And as soon as I said that, she was sitting, I think she was sitting on the second pew when I said, Whitley and candy. She peeked up and she looked back at me. She said, candy? She knew. I was, yeah, I was just using it for example. But she knew if Daddy said it, it's going to happen. I feel like we need to be that way with God. You know, we may not see it. We may not know that He's got it right there. She didn't know if I had it in my pocket or not. Yeah. But Dad said He's got it. Yeah. And I feel like we need to be with God that way. You know, say, Lord, I want it and I need it. And He says, here it is. Yeah. And we need the faith to go and get it. Right. You know, we don't, we don't see God. Sometimes, sometimes I feel like I don't feel God a lot of times. Sometimes it's kind of a struggle to try and feel Him. But we don't know how He's going to do it. But we need total confidence that he will. He's already said He will to it. I've been reading a book about George Mueller and some of the faith that he had. You know, he, he started several orphanages. Just a great man. And throughout the... I'm on the, I believe, the third chapter. And in the first two chapters, the, the entire thing is, I needed so much money, we didn't have it, I went and prayed. While I was praying, somebody showed up to the orphanage and said, God told me to give this to you. Or, we didn't have any bread for breakfast the next morning. So I got down and I prayed about it that night. And when I got up the next morning, the milkman had extra milk and a couple of loaves of bread. So he said, y'all just go ahead and have it. And just time and time again, George Mueller, he demonstrated his faith. 
He went to God and said, I know you can and I know you will. And God supplied the need for him. Oftentimes we say that we know God and that we trust Him, but do we really show that in our life? God, I know You can heal me. And so and so has got cancer. I know You can heal him. And then we just leave it at that. Sometimes we don't even go that far. God, I know You can work in my marriage. God, I know You can save my lost family. But we never put any faith into it. Where is our faith? Sometimes we'll go and pray about it a little bit. We'll get up and say, well, my lost loved one hadn't come to church this weekend, so I guess it's over. What are we doing about that? Are we even demonstrating our faith? Are we going we talking to them about it? Are we trying to invite them to church? You know, God may be dealing with them and trying to draw them to church, and they just need somebody to come talk to them. But if we're not going to put any demonstration or any effort into it, no faith into it, is He going to work for us? God may be working on it, but we're not doing our part. Jesus said at one point in Scriptures, I will be thou whole. He said, I will do it. Do your part. You know, He said to the lame man, you know, that I don't remember how long he had been lame on his feet, I believe it said, but you know, as a child, Jesus told him, Arise, take up thy bed and walk. God, I know you can do it. Just lay there. He'd have died on that bed, but God said, Do it. So what did he do? He got up, he rolled his bed up, and he walked out of there with it. Because he believed in what God said he would do. Trying to figure out how we can make it work and trying to do it our way will not work. God never said, Try it your way, and if it don't work out, come see me, and then we'll try to work something out. He just said, This is the plan. Trust me, and we'll do it. Faith is the substance, it's the genetic makeup of it. The things that are hoped for, the things that we're praying or seeking God to do for us, the evidence or the proof of the things we have not seen. Faith should be demonstrated daily. Not just on Sunday morning when we come in, or not just Wednesday, but daily in our everyday walk. God, I don't know how, and I don't know when, but I know that You can you know, we, we live in a society of fear. How many times have we let fear be the motivating factor instead of faith? You know, Brother Junior, I've got things that I've been trying to figure out, and a lot of times I'll let the what ifs get in the way. Well, what if this happens, or what if that happens? What if I don't get to work next week? And I start letting fear control me, and, and fear will drive out the faith. Faith begins where worry ends. One of the two is going to be there. You've got to get one of them out. Throw fear, worry, and doubt out the window. Let's get rid of it and put faith in the God who can. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. We all know the Scripture. We could probably quote it. It says, Now let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Now, there's a difference, brother. My uh, teenage Sunday school teacher taught about this. He taught about the difference between coming boldly before the throne of grace and coming demanding. He said, "You need to come to Him knowing that He will do it." God, I know You can. I know You will. But not just coming in there and saying, "God, do it," because You're who You are. So just go ahead and do it for me. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about Him. He said boldly, meaning not afraid, frightened, or scared. Not coming to Him shaking, just, I, I hope you will, maybe you can't. But He is our Heavenly Father, and He wants to do for us what we ask. I've come to Dad, and I've asked Him for some things before, and He'll do just about everything He can do in His power to try and help me get there. And then we say we've got a Heavenly Father, but we won't go to Him the same way we go to our earthly Father. The Father wants to do it. It's His pleasure to do these things for us. Romans 12 and 3. The last part of it says, According as God hath dealt to every man a measure of faith. He's already given to us a small portion of it. We just need to use it properly. 
Without faith, it, it is impossible to please God. You know, use me, Lord, to have the faith to do my part to please you and to grow your kingdom. It's not about us. Again, it's about Him. A lot of times we don't have any faith because we know there's another truck at the dealership. I, uh, we were delivering some buildings, me and my boss, where we're about, probably about four hours from home. And uh, he drives a, a Peterbilt truck. And he's a good man. He's a Christian man. Uh, but we started having problems with the truck. And uh, I felt a little faith rising up. I mean, I asked him, I said, I said, Todd, let's pray for this. And he looked at me and he hesitated. And as soon as he hesitated, I, I looked at him and I said, I don't know if it'll work now. And I wasn't trying to condemn him. But I, I said, let's pray anyway. So we, we did a little bit of praying. And, and the last thing he, he told me, he said, I hope your prayer worked. And I, I told him, I said, it wasn't my prayer, that's your truck. I said, where was your faith? And he hung his head and he said, I don't have any right now. And we got about two miles down the road and we had to pull into a shop. And they ended up fixing it that day. And we got back on the road and we got on the road and I, I looked at him and said, I'm, I said, I'm sorry, you know, I wasn't trying to be that way. And he said, no, you were right. You know, if when we really need Him, we blame our lack of faith. I feel like we need to, but a lot of times we want to blame God for it. Well, God didn't move the last time I needed Him. Why is He going to move this time? Why would He help me this time? But it's not God's fault. He didn't do anything. He's standing there saying, I've got it if you'll come and get it. And we won't go take it from it. It's our lack of faith. It's our lack of action. You know, if, if we knew that that truck had to last us 10, 15, 20 years, we would do our best to maintain it. We would have faith at the end of that that we did all we could to make sure that that truck got us to the end of the road. When is the last time that we had some spiritual maintenance done? Brother Tommy? You know, if, if we go to buy a new truck, are we just going to show up and pick the first one we see? <laughs> no. We're going to read up on it. We're going to learn the specs about it. The pros and the cons. What makes it work better? You know, that will it last long enough? Let's test drive it. You know, is it going to do what I need it to do? Is it big enough for the job? Could this not be used in our faith? You know, let's read up on it. Let's read up on faith. Let's learn how it works. Let's learn what makes it work better. Let's test it. Let's do our part. Let's get in there and let's see what we can do to make it work. In uh, 1 Kings chapter 17, I got a couple demonstrations here. Verse, uh, verse 9 through 16. Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zida, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he rose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not cake, but a handful of meal and a barrel and a little oil and a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I my that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me therefore a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, Excuse me. neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. And Brother Nathan mentioned this in a, the Sunday school lesson this morning. 
And as I read this a while back, I thought of the faith of a dead man or a dead woman. That The woman didn't have anything. She knew she was at death's door. Her and her son both. She was at her end. There was nothing else she could do. They didn't have any money. They had just a couple sticks. Just, just a handful. One meal. Barely enough to get a meal. She said, all I have is just this little bit here. And it's over. We're going to starve out. We're going to die. But because the man of God asked her to do one thing, she went and did that. Just It, it was such a small thing. It was just a bite, of, just a little piece of bread. That's all it was. But because she did, she just put that little bit of faith she had in Elijah and what he asked of her. She was free from death. It wasted not. People all around her were probably suffering and starving to death. But because she took time and the faith to do the one thing that she was asked, the barrel wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail. In 2 Kings chapter 4, Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the son of the prophets, and Elisha, saying, Thy servant my husband is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, Thy handmaid hath not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, and borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee, and upon thy sons, and shalt pour out into all those vessels. And thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him, and shut the door upon her, and upon her sons, who brought the vessels to her. And she poured out. And it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of God. And he said, Go, sell the oil, pay the debt, and live thou and thy children off the rest. There's the faith of a debtor right there. Again, she was at her end. No oil, no money. But she obeyed Elisha. What if she would have just borrowed a few vessels? Would she even pay the debt off? She said, just go to the neighbors see what they got. And then she still would have had to sold her sons off to slavery just to finish paying the debt. But she did. She just put that little bit of faith in there. She got everything she could and they lived debt free and lived on as a family, as a unit. They were together. Because of just a little bit of faith. Amen. And who was our faith in? When Jesus died on the cross, the centurion said, Surely this was the Son of God. Help me, Jesus. God told Moses, Tell them, I am the I am not the I was. When the centurion said that this was the Son of God, I believe that there was a little bit of error in that statement. And if I'm wrong, y'all can correct me. But I submit to you that the centurion watched the Son of Man die and not the Son of God. Christ had to die for our sins. He was perfect. He knew no sin. But you cannot kill the deity. I believe that Jesus was 100% man and 100% God all at the same time. If you study the Son of Man, I believe that it refers to the earthly side of Christ, the human side of Him, the hunger on His 40-day fast, the agony at the garden, the pain and the suffering at the whipping post and the cross. The earthly man died out. He who knew no sin became sin when His precious blood covered His body and poured out the old sinful flesh had to die out to the ultimate sacrifice. But the Son of God lived on. That's who our faith should be in. Here I looked up a, a list of all the, the names of God in the Bible. Names of Jesus. And I believe there was somewhere around, I want to say there was somewhere around 900 different names for Christ or God in the Bible. And I got to just looking through there and 
Everything you need is in there. It was covered at, when God was talking to Moses, you know, tell I am the I am. But all throughout the Bible, it goes to that He's the counselor, the physician, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Just everything that you need, whatever it is that you need, He's saying, I am that. I am what you need. It's just a, a blank check sign saying, here it is. Just put whatever you need right in the page of the order. And that's it. Everything that you need, He will be for us if we were put our faith in Him. And that's all I have this morning, brother.